everybody, Ashley Escada with Techno Buffalo giving you the TLDR, the too long didn't read, or I guess the TLDW, the too long didn't watch on the WWDC keynote today. It's a two hour long keynote, so if you don't have the time, here are the bullet points on what you missed. It was a jam packed keynote. Tim Cook took the stage, gave us some facts and figures on all of the money they've been giving to developers. They've got 50 billion app downloads. I mean, just billion was thrown around a lot during the keynote. And uh, then he wanted to talk about OS 10. The newest version of Mac's operating system will be called OS 10 Mavericks. They have offered us multiple display integration that allows displays to act independently of each other. So if you've ever found yourself wanting to use mission control in one window, but wanted to stay with your browser open in another window, you can now do that. Another big piece of news for OS 10 users was tabbed finder. So if you've ever found yourself with multiple finder windows open, you can now have one cohesive finder window with all of your different areas of note in tabs. You're going to be able to tag files. Very helpful for anybody who's ever wanted to search for files across time, but with the same theme. So maybe I want to find a picture of CES from a few years ago. I can do that now with tags. We also saw, as we normally see at WWDC, hardware refreshes, and this time around it was the MacBook Air. So the MacBook Air, a lot of people were crossing their fingers for a Retina update. We didn't quite get that this year, but we did get a huge increase in battery life. So the 11 inch MacBook Pro is gonna go up to nine hours of battery life, as opposed to five before. And the 13 inch MacBook Pro, because it has a bigger battery, is actually gonna go up to 12 hours of battery life as opposed to the seven it had available to it before. So that's a pretty big leap and leads me to the conclusion that it's pretty obvious Apple is actively working on bringing Retina to the MacBook Air. It's just gonna take time because they have to make sure that the battery life is sustainable for something like Retina. There was also a hardware unveiling, something I was hoping to see this year at WWDC and Apple made my wishes come true. The Mac Pro, a new refreshed Mac Pro finally showed up at WWDC and it's kind of insane. It's amazing. It's this little tiny thing. They showed it. it's one eighth of the size of a regular Mac Pro, which is a huge tower. And they have added Thunderbolt ports. They've got the standard USB. Uh, they are rocking two video cards by default in there by AMD. It is going to be incredible. They showed off a little bit of the specs. It was a sneak peek, so they didn't give us the full details. I would have bought one today if I had the ability to. But unfortunately, we're going to have to wait till fall to check out the super powerful and super tiny Mac Pro. And of course, the big news, the most anticipated part of WWDC this year for many of you, iOS 7 was unveiled. We got a pretty big taste of it. It is a lot flatter for sure. Johnny Ive has busted out the steamroller and he's also removed all of the brushed aluminum, the felt, the wool, the stitched leather, it's all gone. You will not see any of that stuff in iOS 7. Uh, as I mentioned in my expectations post last week, it was a subtle shift and a subtle change in some ways. Uh, if you've used an iPhone for a long time, it will be a big change for you, I think. But if you have used Android or Windows phone, it might be a little bit less of a shift. It might be something you're a little more used to. Finally, multitasking, you have these lovely notifications. Uh, everything's a little bit different. Siri now has men and women voices, which is really cool. I would like to see Apple license GLaDOS's voice. Uh, I would like to see GLaDOS telling me how to run my iPhone, but I don't think they'll do that. But if you do Apple, uh, you're welcome for the great idea. Apple also announced iTunes Radio. It is a radio service similar to Pandora. Uh, they also have the same similar sort of fee structure, but it's a little bit different. So if you have iTunes, but you don't have iTunes match, that's 25 bucks a year, uh, you will get an ad supported version of iTunes radio. If you subscribe to iTunes match, which is 25 bucks a year, you get an ad free version of iTunes radio. So it's sort of a value add to iTunes match. Uh, the real question is, is the functionality and the service similar to Pandora and can Genius provide an equivalent algorithm to Pandora's Music Genome Project? Those are the two big questions about iTunes Radio. I'll be really curious to try it out. I'm sure we're gonna be giving it a test run as soon as we have access to it. So stay tuned for that. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, it'll be really interesting to see how many users leave Pandora and come to iTunes Radio because they're already using iTunes Match. That's it for the WWDC TLDW, I guess. Too long, didn't watch. Uh, we will see you guys for recaps all over E3 show floor, but for now, I gotta start saving up for my Mac Pro.